In this video, I want to talk about major sentence errors. <clears throat> so in the last videos, I've talked about problems with combining patterns. But now, once the pattern gets formed as a sentence, there are a group of errors that show up that relate to those earlier errors. But uh, most uh, composition teachers will recognize these names, uh, comma splice, few sentence, and uh, fragment. So if you can stay away from these errors, you'll uh, go a long way in helping your form of the writing be a, a non-obstacle to your audiences grasping your content and your idea. So um, let's take a look at these. Now remember, a pattern becomes a sentence when it gets capitalized as one, and in English, in America, recently, within the last, I don't know, two centuries, we've been capitalizing the beginning of our sentences. So you need a capital letter there at the beginning, and then you, at the end, whenever you want to say, okay, here's the end of one of my sentences, you need one of three marks. Uh, period, an exclamation mark, or a question mark. An exclamation point or a question mark. So uh, those are called and punctuation, and those are the three things that can end a period. Now, Here's just a quick aside. Sometimes you'll see a sentence that ends in ellipses marks, like the dot, 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 and it sort of indicates a pause or a, a question or, or a little bit, yes, I wonder if she'll come, but dot, 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 dot. But most careful uh, proofreaders and editors are going to insist that four dots are there, three for the ellipses marks and one for the period, because only a period or an exclamation point or a question mark can end a sentence. Of course, these rules are just come about by common usage. Not not grammar rules, but punctuation rules and all that sort of thing. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, style rules and punctuation rules, they come and go, but but uh, you, you would be well to just uh, play around, uh, uh, use this notion to guide you in our work and in your academic writing, and your sentences with a period, a question mark, or uh, an exclamation point, would you? Now, let's take a look at what happens here. I have uh, some patterns here, all right? Major sentence errors, few sentence splice, and fragment. Let's discuss these things. Uh, the box was big. Um, I got a verb. I got a subject complement. Who or what was big? The box. Is it saying the box equals a big thing? A big box? Yes. So that's our pattern there. Um, could left is the verb. Not is an adverb, a negative adverb. It's, it almost always will be that. If you just want to tuck that away in your memory, not, N-O-T, will almost always be a negative adverb. And it could, it could just be included with the verb. Verb, who or what could not lift? I, subject, I could not lift who or what? It, is it being equated with I? No, so this is a direct object. See, I've got my two patterns here. Now, if I were just to make this a capital T, and put a period right here, and that's it. You see I've jammed two patterns together? And they both could really stand on their own. This is a few sentence. Now let's take a look at the next one. Dogs will chase cats. Verb. Who or what will chase dogs? Dogs will chase who or what? Cats. This is your direct object. They like to run. Like is the verb. They, who or what like? They. They like who or what? To run. This is your direct object. I, I haven't gotten into this yet, but infinitives can be direct objects. And this is an infinitive. I have talked about that. But I've never included one in the sentence pattern. But that's what it would look like, okay? So I've got a subject verb, direct object, subject verb, direct object. Yeah, and if I were just to capitalize this as a capital D, okay, and put, a, put an exclamation point here, uh, I would have a few sentence. I'm trying to combine two patterns within the sentence without anything there. So this is a few sentence. Now, how about if I just put a comma here? Like that. Well, now I've just changed the name of the... Well, I've changed the error. It's still an error. I went from a few sentence to a splice. This is called a comma splice. It's not going to work. Now, what if I were to put like a type of adverb in here like this? The box was big, therefore, I could not lift it. And I put in a comma, therefore. Well, you know, therefore is not a conjunction. 
Remember, only a conjunction, a colon, or a semicolon can combine these things. So that is not a conjunction. That would be a splice. It would be an adverb splice. That wouldn't work. All right. The box was big, uh, and therefore I could not lift it. Now I got it. Now that's correct because I got a conjunction combining the two. But anyway, you know, as it was, these these sentences went through few sentence, and then it went through comma splice, and then this one went through a verb, an adverb splice. Okay, all mistakes. What is a fragment? Well, let's look at this one. The campers brought many useless things. For instance, gum. If I were to make this a capital T, I was going to go many useless things. And I put a period here. Do I have a sentence here? Let's see. Brought, verb. Who or what brought? The camper, subject. The campers brought who or what? Many useless things. Direct object. That's a pattern. I can always turn a pattern itself, you know, an independent pattern, into a sentence by giving it a capital letter at the beginning and a an end stop at the end, and I would have a simple sentence. That's a simple sentence. Okay. Um, as it stands here, I've got a simple sentence. But what what am I going to do with this? So maybe I'll put a capital F here and put a period here. Do I have a sentence there? Well, do I have at least one pattern? I don't. All I have is a conjunctive adverb. It's an adverb. Two-word adverb. And, well, no, excuse me, actually, this is a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase. And a, uh, well, I don't know what that is. I'm going to think it's gum because it's being equated to things over here, so I'm going to think it's a noun. But I, I don't know. You know, th what I'm trying to say is, okay, yes, okay, so it's a noun. But is it an object or a, it's a subject? Well, because they brought many things, I guess we could say a direct object. But, but wait a minute, this is not a pattern. So in itself, it can never be capitalized like a, or punctua punctuated and capitalized like a sentence. When you do that, when you turn a group of words that is not at first at the very base a pattern into a an apparent sentence by capitalizing the first letter of that group of words, the first word of the group, and then putting an end stop at the end, you create a fragment. Now we do this a lot in everyday speech because we always answer questions. Would you like some ketchup on your hot dog? Sure. Period. You know, we just say that out. Yes. Um, what What would you like to drink with that? With that, uh, a Coke is our answer, right? A Coke. That's not a pattern, but we give it out as a as a unit of thought, right? So I, I really don't like the definition of a sentence that says it's a unit of thought. Uh, it's much better to tag it down to these patterns. But. Uh, so we, we, we often talk in fragments. That's colloquial usage. And sometimes you'll find fragments in writing, in magazines and journals, and, 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 and they're stylistic. They're trying to imitate collo colloquial expression, how we actually talk. They're trying to put a conversational tone into the writing. But you would be safe to always avoid that in your academic work. Uh, when you have a when you're doing professional work and you can run it by an editor and you can get feedback and all that, sure, you know, or ask your teachers if you want to, but uh, just play it safe and avoid those sort of stylized fragments. But fragment, comma splice, and if, as you saw at the beginning, when you just try to jam it together with white space, few sentences. Those are really the three major sentence errors that come about when students don't understand how to combine sentences. I hope at this point you have a, a basic understanding. Um, there's much more to go, but we probably won't go all that way. But uh, I feel that getting to at least this point will help you if you decide to pick this up on your own and if you get a hold of a, a nice grammar book uh, to make sense of this.